Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to another video. In the last video, we talked about ST segment changes, and today we'll be continuing the series with T wave abnormalities. So, here are the topics we'll be covering. Firstly, what's a normal T wave? Second, what are the abnormal T waves? Where we'll talk about tall T waves, flat T waves, biphasic T waves and inverted T waves. So what's a normal T wave? The normal T waves are usually less than 6 mm of amplitude in limb leads and less than 10 mm of amplitude in chest leads. Now coming to abnormalities. First one is the tall T waves. Since we know what's a normal T wave, any T waves that's more than 6 mm of amplitude in limb leads or more than 10 mm of amplitude in chest leads are gonna be abnormal. It can be tall with wide base which is known as hyperacute T waves seen in early coronary artery occlusion. Or it can be tall and tented like in the case of hyperkalemia. Now coming to second abnormality, flat T waves. Now flat T waves may appear to have a small hump which is of 1 mm of height or maybe a negative 1 mm and sometimes it can appear completely flat, commonly seen in hypokalemia or in MI as well. Coming to the third abnormality, biphasic T waves. As the name suggests, T waves are going to have a positive and a negative wave. This pattern is commonly seen in hypokalemia, also seen in myocardial infarction to be precise in Velen syndrome, where V2 and V3 will have a biphasic T wave, which is specific for critical stenosis of left anterior descending artery. Now, there's a small difference in the biphasic pattern in both the condition. Like, we'll have a positive wave first followed by a negative wave in case of MI, and in the case of hypokalemia, you'll have a negative wave first followed by a positive wave. Now coming to the last one, inverted T waves. Inverted T waves can be seen normally in lead 3 AVR or V1, but seen elsewhere should raise suspicion for any pathology. They can be primary or secondary, but we won't talk about that. What's more important to us is whether it's an ischemic T wave or is it a strain pattern like seen in ventricular hypertrophy. An ischemic T inversion is symmetrical, whereas that of LV strain pattern is asymmetrical with a steep upward stroke and sometimes even have an overshoot at the end of the wave. Now, the LV strain will be associated with LVH voltage criteria. You may also find T inversions in other conditions such as bundle branch blocks. Wolf Parkinson's White Syndrome, ectopic beads, myocarditis, pericarditis, MVP, or even CVA. So I hope you have understood. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.